Welcome to Council Connection. I'm Kim Baxter, Mayor and Durango City Councilor. This program is designed to give you a snapshot of the happenings at the most recent Durango City Council meeting. This time we look at the July 20th meeting. We began this meeting with a presentation from 18 supporters of the Hohana Kuliana Community Garden. The garden property has recently been put on the market by its owner. The speakers passionately urged Council to look at acquiring the garden as a parks and recreation amenity. This garden is full of multi-year passionate members who have poured their hearts into building this self-sustaining plot. They have co-created systems to provide for ample nutrient-dense soils, conservative watering systems, and demonstrative gardening techniques we all learn from. My wife and I just purchased a home directly behind the garden, and that was a huge incentive for us. The truth is, like, I would drop anything to be here right now. It's very important to us in that way, um, and I think this goes to show that, you know, so many people rally around this. It's actually a part of our identities. Hopefully, this council will want to learn the full story and will schedule a needed study session to get a complete picture of why this resource is of a value to the city asset. There's, there's a lot more. It's an opportunity for people to work together for a common goal, and that common goal is a good goal, growing food, growing healthy food and taking care of the environment. At Riverview, the garden is a core part of science. We learn about a plant's life cycle and see it in motion. We see animals in their natural habitat and have conversations about their importance to the ecosystem. We watch the seasons change and talk about why some plants die in fall and others don't. We learn about why pollinators are important and why we need to save them. I know what you're thinking. You can learn all of that from a classroom. But from my schooling experience, I remember the things we learned in projects versus taking notes at a desk. Children learn through doing. I think it's developmentally important for a young child not just to learn about the world around them, but to see it in real life. I'm, I want to explain why it is that we want the study session. Because it's been there, done that. We've tried all of those. That We've gone that route. And essentially, then we get, we get slammed at the council level because the council hasn't been involved from the get-go. What I really want to talk about today are student firsts. Uh, we all, everyone in this room, has memories of the first time you learned something new or trying something new or experiencing something new. Some of these experiences stay with us as strong memories and even help to shape who we become. The first time planting a seed and watching it grow and complete its life cycle, the first time growing and delivering food to the school cafeteria and seeing it on their lunch tray the next day, the first time getting a splinter, no joke, <laughs> uh, or a blister, or the first time having dirt under their fingernails. To honor the fiduciary responsibility to our community who voted for the Parks and Rec dedicated sales tax, this project should first go to the Parks and Rec Advisory Board for review and possible recommendation to the council for their consideration. The consent agenda consisted of 12 mostly routine items. One of those was a final vote on an ordinance changing council meeting times from 6.30 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on the first and third Tuesdays. This change takes effect August 3rd. Another item moved our September 21st meeting to Monday the 20th, so counselors can attend the Colorado Municipal League annual meeting later that week in Westminster. We had two quasi-judicial hearings. The first was a rezone and conceptual plan for three acres at the northwest corner of Florida Road and Metz Lane, known as the Milton property. Shaw LTD proposes to build 24 townhomes in 12 duplex buildings on the site. Councilors voted positively on the rezone and conceptual plan, but the proposal faces additional necessary approvals. The second hearing was on a preliminary subdivision for the Durango Christian Church property at East 3rd Avenue and 11th Street. This would create two separate lots, one for the church and the other for a home, which would then be sold. It also was approved. Our finance department provided a quarterly report on how the city is doing, and the news is positive. And that is due to the city would uh, typically expect to receive 47% of our revenues. Um, currently, our sales tax and use tax is trending at 58% um, of total collections. And so that's really ahead 11% or 1.7 million in that category. Um, if council recalls, as we went into the 2021 budget, we are expecting an 8% decrease in our sales and use tax revenues. So 
um, much more po positive outlook than we are anticipating. Later in the meeting, council approved cost of living increases for city staff, averaging 3%. We also made a series of mid-year budget adjustments for numerous departments for a total of just under $1.3 million in budget changes. Here are additional items of interest. The next neighborhood meeting for the multimodal transportation plan update process is Monday, August 2nd from 4 to 6 p.m. in the Animus Room at La Plata County Fairgrounds. Residents are invited to provide feedback on how Durango's multimodal transportation network can be improved. Find more information at durangogov.org mtp. Durango has retained its spot as one of the top bicycle-friendly community cities in the nation. This recognition is bestowed by the League of American Bicyclists, an education and advocacy organization founded in 1880. Durango is one of only 34 communities with the gold level designation in 2021. And the Fort Lewis College Old Fort Farm Stand is back in business, weekly on campus every Wednesday from noon to 2 p.m. in the Education Business Hall parking lot. They offer locally grown grass-fed beef, veggies, and other healthy locally grown food. Our next study session will be Tuesday, August 3rd at 2.15 p.m. Our next regular city council meeting is Tuesday, August 3rd at 5.30 p.m. Agendas for meetings are posted at durangogov.org slash meetings. And that's Council Connection for the July 20th Durango City Council meeting. I'm City Councilor and Mayor Kim Baxter. Thanks for joining us and remember, you can always contact your City Councilors via email at citycouncil at durangogov.org.